Attorney knows best. Intelligent interviews. Interesting insight. Intriguing information. Attorney knows best. Here's your host, Sean Bartley. Welcome to another edition of Attorney Knows Best. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with a resume writing expert by the name of Richard Drosen. Richard helps people get employed. During these post-COVID-19 times and during the pandemic times, people are going to need to get employed. Unfortunately, the employment numbers came out this weekend for new President Joe Biden, and they're bad. We knew they were going to be bad because employers are going out of business. People are getting laid off. But there are some businesses and companies that are thriving. And if you've lost your job looking for a career change and need that extra oomph for that extra help, the person to talk to is Richard Drosen, and I have him here today. Hey, Richard, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you, Sean. I appreciate you for having me. Thanks. Um, how have you been surviving these COVID-19 times? I ask everyone that. I think it's important to do a check-in. You know, I, thank you for that. I think it's important to ask that question. So for me, it's I've been just trying to thrive a little. You know, I would keep myself actively busy. You know, I try not to think too much. I just try to do what I do, which is help people. And I've been blessed to be able to do that, which is actually kind of giving me a drive to continue to push forward. So truthfully, I'm I'm actually doing OK. I think that, you know, I'm not as scared as most people. That What I mean by that is, you know, I follow the regulations. I follow the protocols. You know, I go places. So I'm not I, I'm still living, Sean. You know, I'm not not living. I still go to the places. I follow whatever they have. So for me. The thing is, is I just make sure that I'm safe, that I'm doing everything I can on my end. So and that's one thing I want people to still do. It's still safe to do certain things. You just have to be cognizant. So if I was doing what most people are doing, which is really just staying home and just buckling down, I I could I would lose it. So (laughs) personally, (laughs) personally, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. While I miss a lot of things, I, I. I'm still able to do things that make me happy and I'm okay. Yeah. I'm one of those guys that stay at home. I got little kids and a wife. I stay at home, anything, but for my fraternity and work, (laughs) I don't go really in other place. And then, you know, when, once it uh, heats up, I'll be back on the golf course and fishing. Listen, but uh, other than that, I'm at home. uh, I'll be joining you on a, on a golf course. So FYI, I have to, you know, get my money up and I got to be there. So get prepared to have me there. Yeah. I'll be happy, man. Be happy. You help me. I help <laughs> you. Hey, um, got it. you're in a really important business. People often think about, I got to get to the right yes. employer, but people who are looking for jobs also need people to help them. And you said during these COVID-19 times, you've been really concentrating on helping people. Yes. You're in the business of getting people employed. And more importantly, you're called, I would call you an expert or professional expert resume writer. Explain what that means. So what it means is that I've been able to format, change, adapt, change wording, content, and put it all together to help people. And the thing about me is that I literally work with every and anybody you can think of. And I'm one of those, I, I, I literally don't have a limit on who I work with. So, you know, for the attorneys, I already know whether you're going corporate or, you, or you're going federal or you're going public. I, I know. I know where to go and how to write. And the funny thing for me is I've been very blessed because I challenge myself. And for me, as an expert, I literally can tap into almost every and every industry and be able to help folks. And that's kind of one of the, the best things about that I believe has been my asset is that I'm not limited to one area. So as an expert, I can tell you how to fix certain things. I can tell you how to push through the system. I can help you get there. But more importantly, Sean, the biggest thing is people are intimidated and are afraid to talk about themselves. That's where I come in because I'm able to put it on paper and help push them. Right. Um, For people who may be listening right now, there's the term CV and the term resume. Um, Describe each one of those things. Are they the same or are they different? They're different. Um, a CV is curriculum vitae, or, or it's, it's a little bit different. It's a lot more. It's um, it's more intensive. There's a lot more information that you put on um, on that as opposed to say a regular resume. 
like corporate companies want resumes. Academia, they would want CVs. You know, if you're going to an institution that has, for example, scientists or or just like, you know, professional degrees or folks that have those higher level degrees, they're going to require that type of CV. So it, that's different. So the biggest the biggest difference is more so just content, how, how you know, how, how much data, how much information is put in on a CV. You might put a bunch of different things that you would have put on a regular C, on a regular resume. Your content might be limited on on a on a on a resume as opposed to a CV. So, you know, it can the, the rule of thumb could almost be. Most people are going to tell you, and I'm going to break this. I'm going to break this myth today. Today, the one-page resume is a no-go. I don't. I don't care who you are. If you're a VP candidate, right, and you're trying to get a resume, and that one page is not going to cut it. You're a professional. You're a solid professional. The standard usually is two. Honestly, it's two two pages. Two pages, SCB not one. Huh? Be, no, Sean. It's one of the biggest misconceptions, and it's one of the ones that I have to fight against my clients mm-hmm. because they're coming to me. And I say one is, listen, it's almost like you have, let's say, 25 years of experience. Now, if it's if you, you know, and I break it down, you know, the thing is, is that I have to put everything together. But I also have to make sure that the human resources person reading it understands that you match the qualifications on a CV. You can almost put as much as you want. But right. on a resume, I have very specific things I have to put on there that will immediately grab someone. A CV is going to be read. It's going to be thoroughly read by obviously someone, an expert in their field. If it's an attorney at, you know, at a law school looking for some, you know, for like a director of diversity and inclusion or, or legal recruitment, they're going to look at those CVs where if that person was looking for maybe like a, a, what is like a corporate counsel type position, it's going to be different. So it's just content. The big thing is content. Now, one of the things I think is really important is that you have a tremendous success record and your success record is based upon your background. You're in the United States military. Thank you for your service. Um, Thank you. Did that help prepare you to become an expert resume writer? I'm going to honestly say that I think what it did, it was it, it did help because one of the things I did was when I took those military in the mil- when when you get out, they give you the opportunity to get training on resumes and to give you training on on interviewing and and practicing well honestly i was already prepared i was confident i knew i was going to be okay but i looked around and looked at my peers and i looked at everybody and their face of worry and sadness which you know i hope your viewers can understand there are people actually the the folks coming out the military aren't as prepared as you think they're now they might have all the greatest skills they're not and sean they're not really they're not and and i'm not gonna you know badmouth any specific branch because I literally work with every single branch. So I can tell you right now Mm -hmm. who's prepared. And as an army guy, I'm just going to put this out there. (laughs) The air force and the Navy seem to really do a good job of preparing their folks coming out because their jobs are just, I mean, they're, they're spot on. It's higher ASVAB scores, the high ASVAB scores of the Navy and the air force get them all ready. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and i'm and unfortunately i'm, I'm air force bias as that score but gosh you know right exactly exactly so what, what it comes down to for me was it was just i wanted to help people and i took that craft and i perfected it over the years mm-hmm. and i kept going and going and going until i got to a point where i really felt comfortable about what i can do can i charge people and i got so good at it to the point that i said you know what let me start helping people out. And it just started increasing, increasing, increasing. Yeah. I remember um, when I was meeting, <laughs> meeting with you at our fraternity and um, uh, full disclosure, uh, me and me and Richard Drosen are fraternity brothers. I won't mention the fraternity, but we're in the world's greatest fraternity. But um, I remember you saying you were yes, at one right. job <laughs> and then the next thing I know, you'd be at another job and then another job. And I was like, man, this guy has something special uh, and he knows how to get jobs. And what's really interesting or change careers or change positions, right? You went to some big, big institutions, um, federal agencies. I think you were even at NIH, right? Something yes. like that. And yes. And you went from big yes, company yes. to NIH to big agency. And I was like, wow, this guy knows what he's doing, right? And lo and behold, because you were successful in doing it for yourself, I think it, it, it clicked in your mind and say, hey, if I could do this for myself, why can't I do it for other people, right? 
Exactly. And I got, and, and, you know, and that's why I try to keep data and results because I hold myself accountable. You know, my thing is at the end of the day, I know I can help people speak for themselves. So, and I have, I always have data. So someone asks me a question, I have info because I know it. And, and I've done such a great job and uh, of, of being able to help so many people out that I know where to look, how to look, how to help people find it and, and, and get them to where they need to be. Now, um, when you were jumping from like position to position, like you escalated quickly. I, I remember yes. you, you making statements yes. about yes. how you were jumping positions and increasing your salary. I think you may even made like three moves in one or two years for yourself personally. Yeah, something crazy. I, I, it was I something did. crazy. I couldn't even I believe did. it. I was like, wow, this guy's killing it. But obviously you knew how to interview, right? That's number Well, number one is you knew how to write a great resume. And then number two, you knew how to interview, right? Um, and so that translated into you saying, hey, I can go into business for myself doing this because if it worked for me, maybe it can work for other people, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And and, and it's, can you talk about those three positions you had and, and, and how you jumped from them in like one year and increase? What did you increase your salary by? Is something crazy. I think it was for me. I think it had it been at least like uh, thirty five thousand in per- a span of like one year. Yeah, from job to job, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it was steadily like it was like twelve, ten, and then I got a final major increase, and it came with a bonus and everything else. And I thought that was like, oh my god, this is amazing! Like I got, I got, I got, this is great, you know. So, um, you know, what to, were the companies? Kind of what were that, the companies kind of- that you jumped from? The, or the organizations you jumped from within well, like three the years? Well, I left the federal government. I let, well, I let, I ended up leaving, I think at the time it was like D.C. government, moved to federal, and then the private sector came. And I said, you know what? I want to do something different. And mm-hmm. it was it was, it was, it, it, it was a time for me to kind of utilize my, my, my specific niche to, to, to work in a type of environment. I said, you know what? Let's do it. So, I mean – the way I work, Sean, is that I'm a very high risk, high reward type of guy. Okay. Everything I do is based upon high risk and high reward. I don't, I'm, I'm not the low guy, you know? So even with, when I take on clients, I know that the reward of getting them a job, even if they say, I don't know if I could trust you or X, Y, and Z, I say, listen, trust me, I take that risk and then they get hired. You know, it, it's, it's one of those things where for me, everything I do is impacted by that. So, but I will also tell you about what, you know, being calculated about it because I'm very strategic in how I move and how, what I do with certain things and with certain things I write on resumes or certain things I do for people. And it's one of those things that I, I, I pride myself on. So I instill that with my clients to make sure that they push themselves to get to that next level. And for me, it wasn't easy. It was just like, you know what? And, you know, you could only imagine the type of questions I was getting asked. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, you know, I can imagine like, when you jump three jobs in a year, the questions are got to be very crazy. But you were actually getting the job interview, seeing that you've jumped like two or three jobs in the same year, but you still got the interview. Usually when I see a job jumper, I don't I say no way I'm not interviewing them because I'm just going to hire them and they're going to jump. But obviously you did something in your resume well, that made them have to call you in. And then second, you killed the interview because you got the job. That's crazy. Honestly, I'm, I'm pretty honest. I'm also very transparent, you know, like as, as much as I as much as I try. To, and one of the things is, you know, like it, when you when you and I started when we first met, I was probably like in my like mid to late twenties. And now it's like, you know, I'm in my early thirties and I can tell you there's a big shift in my attitude and how I do things. And, you know, it's funny because when you guys, you know, the, you know, the guys older than me always say, Richard, listen, you just need to wait, you know, like, and now I get it, you know, like now I get it because it's one thing being very Mm self-ambitious and it's one thing really understanding where you fit in, in the grand scheme of things. And now I can go back and tell some of my younger, you know, like my younger clients who remind me of me, like, hey, let's let, let, let's pause for a second. Let's really think about this. You know what I mean? Like, is this something that you really want to do? Do you really want to jump that quick? Is You know, let's talk about steps. I know I've been there. I know. And I also know how I could be detrimental as well. You know, like uh-huh. you want to do that. Right. So um, what or, or why? Are resumes 
important from an employer's perspective? Why do you want to see your resume? I mean, it's the first thing that people look at. It's the first thing that people see. They get to see your 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 background, who you are. You're 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 on paper. This is your brand. You are the brand. You're trying to sell them as to why they need to hire you and what can you do for them. Companies are trying to figure out what can you do for me. If you can't spell it out on a resume, nobody's going to want to hire you. And it's important because, you know, unlike unlike European standards here in America, we're blessed because we don't have to take photos. OK, on our on, on our on our on put on our resumes. Right. So guess what that means? Our our words are extremely critical as to how we make qualifications. So if someone said, you know what, I like this guy because I like the way he looks. He looks like he could be a, assertive. And then but their qualifications could be probably not even not even remotely as great as someone right. else that they have. So we're blessed to have that in the U.S. So I mean, it, you know, it, yeah. There are countries where they want you to send your picture oh, and your resume. Oh. That's crazy. Oh, That's like I mean, discrimination one on one. I would think. Wow. Thank it, God we don't do that in America. Surprised. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, and I look at that, and the first thing I do is do this. Oh my gosh! Like, I, you, this is not going to work for an American company. It might. There might be a global company, but I'm telling you now, someone's going to read it, and it's going to be a global recruiter, and they're probably going to come from the states, and they're going to say, "No, I'm not reading this." So you have to adapt. And that's another reason why the resume is important. You have to format it. You have to put it in a way that will help push you. Right. I think you touched on something that's really important. And you said it um, uh, earlier on during our discussion. And you said it again. You said people have a hard time talking about themselves, number one, or promoting themselves. And then number two, the resume sells you. It's all about selling what you can do for the company expound upon that. Yeah. So one of the things that people want to see is, you know, you highlight your achievements. You do the thing, you you talk about what qualifications that you have besides the whole education and et cetera. You know, this is an opportunity for them to see who you work for. That's one component of it, right? Now you're talking about the selling component because on paper, if you match the qualifications or they feel like you're a good candidate, you're going to have an opportunity to get a phone call. The goal here is always to get the phone call. You sell yourself and you remind them why they picked you to begin with when you get the when you get to that point. That's the thing. A lot of people don't get to that point because they they don't properly annotate the things that they've done, what they've achieved, how you know, it's very generic in nature. So it, it, it doesn't match. So someone's going to say, I'm not really interested in this guy because it's kind of boring. Like, right. you know, but again, so if a person, yeah, if, a, if a resume is boring, then like, boring. like, I mean, cause like, I would think I would want my resume to be safe. I want it to be safe. Well, and so if it's safe, I mean, then it could be boring. Right. Yeah. Yes. I mean, let me rephrase boring. But what I mean mm-hmm. by that, when I mean by boring, I mean the wording and how it's written. OK. Format wise, I am the most I and as uh, and you know me, Sean, you know, I'm eccentric. I'm flashy. But when it comes to my resumes, I am a traditionalist through and through. OK. I am not one of those guys uh, or gals that does, you know, these crazy graphics and X, Y, and Z. I don't do that because the systems are used to black and white. I'm very traditional. So, and it's work, as you can see, as you can see, it works. Right. And I stick to the traditional route until someone says, hey, you, you need to, you need to go switch up these resumes, these AT, the systems, what they call ATS, the applicant tracking system, which okay. is being used by these corporate companies, how it's being read. So boring is fine. If it's black and white, you don't need color. The point of it really is ultimately the content. People forget that. It's almost like, okay, I was an attorney. All right. I, I, I let's say. Um, I, you know, my, my, I have the, let's, we'll say something along the lines of research and analysis. Like, uh, I wrote, you know, r- reports for partners and, and, and manage X, Y, and Z. That's boring. When you get into details, like, for example, you'll say, you know, properly executed, you know, uh, 40% of claims that actually resulted in X, Y, and Z. That's what they're looking for. So you write resumes for attorneys. So you've written resumes, you write resumes for everybody, every profession. I have. Wow. That's awesome. I have and plenty. That's everybody. good. I've yeah. done, I've done things for like the 
like an uh, immigration attorney, uh, immigration judge in Texas. A I judge? Think, I mean, general counsels. Wow. I mean, yeah, that was pretty cool. I was really, really, that was really cool. I mean, I've had some very, very scholarly people come to me. And I think it's really awesome because a lot of them will want to, like, they'll switch, per, like, um, industries. Mm-hmm. So you'll have a lot of the folks from private sector wanting to go, pri- you know, go federal. And what it comes down to is a lot of them will say to me, well, Richard, I made over $300,000, but I'm miserable. And I'm like, well, you know, I, I understand. And I said, well, do you understand that when you go to the federal side, you're not doing it for money. You're, you know, like this, you're doing it for what would, what they would say, work-life balance. Work-life you're balance, doing it for safety, stability. <laughs> holidays, <laughs> President's Day, Native American Ex- exactly. Day. <laughs> Ex- exactly. Exa- work exactly. Work from home exactly. three days a week. <laughs> Telecommute. Yeah. Man, when you listen, work for the Fed. Yeah. You can't beat that. I mean, you know, and I look at the attorney attorneys and say, listen, I understand, you know, so and then I have the opposite where folks are like, you know what, I'm tired of making, you know, OK money. and I'd like to go to the private sector side. I'm like, all right, let's go. And that's a whole different beast. So it really, you know, I write the resume according to the industry sometimes, but it can be a big challenge. So you help people transition from federal employment to private employment and from private employment to federal employment. How do those resumes Correct. differ? And I know they differ because oh. I try to get federal jobs uh, way back and somebody told, showed me what a federal resume looked like. And I said, man, I'm not doing a federal resume. They're different, aren't they? Thanks for listening to attorneyknowsbest.com. If you hadn't heard, I'm using anchor.fm to record this podcast. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First, Anchor.fm is free. That's right, totally free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will then distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. I listen to my podcasts on Google Podcasts. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app now or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M to get started. Back to the podcast. Thanks for listening. So there's a big difference between federal resumes and corporate private resumes. What's the difference and why is it important? The big, the big difference is that there are very specific things that they care about on a federal resume. For example, private sector, they just want, you know, like the title, the name of the company, the date, right? With mm-hmm. the feds, they want something more along like they want to know the address. They want to know your supervisor contact. They want to know, you know, the hours of work that you, that you work. Because for example, what they're going to look at is they're going to quantify the years of experience times your date. So then that way they can see if it equates to 52 weeks for that particular specialized experience. You see, now I'm talking lingo. But what that means is, do you meet that one year of specialized equivalent, uh, specialized experience to meet that grade level in an appropriate job? Now, the feds, they might say, I mean, sorry, the private sector might say, well, I just want eight years of total experience. So, you know, they're not necessarily looking for someone with X, Y, and Z. They're looking... Can you meet that background? And then the hiring manager will make that decision based upon your skill set. Okay, they met. Now, again, this is where it gets tricky. The federal government, that's just the past HR. We're not even talking about going through the assessment because there are assessments that come with the federal applications. So now you're not, you're dealing with almost two, three, four, two, three, four, five different steps before you even get the interview. The private sector, they're going to call you. They're going to assess you. But the assessment is going to come in a form of maybe a, a interview unless you work at, for example, Capital One, where uh, one of my recent hires got a humongous um, pay raise. Is Capital but, One meaning Capital One Bank? Yes, correct. Okay. But the corporate headquarters. And let me tell you something. And 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 when you realize why he deserved the salary that he deserved, because he passed one of they're known to challenge their cybersecurity folks before they even get to the door. So you're going to take a test. If you can't pass that test, you're not going to work for them. Okay. So their ju- their salaries are justified based upon the level of skill. It's almost the same thing for the feds, except that they're going to see, can you meet the requirement? 
But then don't forget, you're going to go see another SME, a subject matter expert that's going to want to hire you. And say, I like this person. A subject Let's matter expert. Board. Yep. Okay. There you go. And that's so in the it's, federal it's government? Challenge. Or is that a capital yes, one? Yes, correct. Okay. No, that's in a that, like, just in a federal government. I'm trying to ex- explain how some there are some similarities based upon the industry, but also the job. But the federal government requires a lot more information. They want more. There's more in-depth info that you're trying to match so it can be classified for certain roles. And it can be very daunting. And it's one of the hardest things to do. Yeah, when I looked at the federal... Um application process i just was like i'm not doing this i was like it's a federal job and the information that was required was i thought it was preposterous i went through their website and had to do what was it called fkas something like that uh Uh, ksas ksas KSAs. (laughs) knowledge (laughs) skills and ability knowledge skills and abilities right and if you don't get these ksas right what happens you're already kicked out. Because, right. I mean, this is where they, this is where they self, you know, your self rating or your own self assessment is matched to what they have and what they're looking for. So imagine you're putting yourself trying to be honest. I'm not saying anything, everybody. What I'm saying is if you're going to put yourself lower, just be prepared that you're going to probably nine, you're 10 times out of 10. You're not going to pass. I, I just mm-hmm. gave everybody a golden nugget. Do not rate yourself low on anything. Let HR figure it out, and they'll tell you whether you meet it or not. Okay, and they'll go from there. Now you're are you you're an expert in writing KSAs, right? Um, I'd like to think so. I mean, I've done it for the federal government. I've done it for DC government. I've written plenty where I've had to actually write, you know, things out and explain how I meet the qualification. So it's 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 a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, when I was doing the KSA thing, I was arrogant and I was young and I was like, man, I'm not writing all this thing out. And one of my friends, her name's Rachel, and she worked for United States Army or I think it was either United States Army or United States Army land acquisition or something. She goes, well, if you don't write the KSAs right, you're not going to get the job. And I said, well, how'd you get the job? You knew somebody. And she goes, no, I knew nobody. I just took meticulous time to write these KSAs. Yeah, and what is happening now is it's more so multiple choice. So a lot of it is multiple choice. And the biggest thing is just identifying where your job matches what they're looking for and writing that in there. So it's shifted a lot, quite it's shifted quite a bit um, to more of a multiple choice and, and just identifying where you where you know where that job is aligned with what the announcement is. And you do that, you'll be okay. But again, if you're someone that's clueless about it, it's going to be very daunting, period. And it's almost like I don't want to do it. So a lot of client, a lot of folks are like, I don't get it. I mean, you could imagine questions I get like, did I do this right? Am I OK? You know, that type of thing. Um, explain the corporate resume and, and how that's different from a federal resume. The, the big thing is it's less. I mean, it's it's content and data driven, just like in you know, the federal, except that. There's certain things that just don't require as much information. They're not going into the full details of who your supervisor was, who, you you know, how many hours a week did you work? You know, it does the language match what the federal announcement is saying. It doesn't match classification there. You know, this is really ultimately with a federal, with a re- corporate resume, you want to make sure that as best as possible, that it meets some of the criteria and some of the things that they look for in the qualifications. And you're also putting that in your resume. And then those are read differently from how a federal resume is, is read, you know, in terms of it goes through a particular system, it goes through certain folks. And it's one of those things where we, you have to be, you have to be kind of careful about what you put on there. Um, what do you think triggers an employer's attention when that resume comes across their desk in the private sector? I think, you know, most people talk about how quickly, you know, how, how quickly can the resume be scanned by like the naked eye and how what they see, you know, I personally will say it's all about format and how clean it looks, you know, and then the qualifications, how did you write it? Did you catch or capture something? You know, I always believe in a strong summary. The summary is so critical because it really is. It is essentially telling your story before you get there. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot. Um, but the, what they look at is content and they might be looking for very specific things. It's almost the equivalency of something crazy like this, Sean, Imagine like you and I go for a job, right? And 
on a on a corporate resume, let's just say that they want someone, let's say for something generic, let's just say like a like a contracts advisor. Right. You have the legal side of contracts, right? But I have the vendor management aspect. So we're both viable candidates. Right. Right. And let's just say in any in announcement, any announcement, it says something about advanced proficiency in Microsoft Excel. And let's just say that you have it and I put advanced proficiency in Word and Excel, but I didn't put it the way I just said it, but you did. Guess who's going to get looked at faster? You are. How's that work? Are they using some kind of scanning software? Are they using a scanning software? Yeah, they're they're using the. So I've been there's a term I've heard. Yes, so this is where the applicant tracking system comes into play, and this is where a lot of stuff comes in where people will you'll put the word resume in, you'll look at it, they'll scan it, they'll say, okay, this person meets eighty five percent of qualifications. Let's cut it. Let's cut off at eighty five, and everybody else that doesn't, let's go. I can start having these phone calls with 85% of these candidates. And out of these, I like them, like her, like her. Nope, don't like her, like him. Let's get, you know, now we got a solid number. I got 25 candidates. Let me go ahead and push the, the next 15. All right, I think 15 is an acceptable number to send to the hiring manager. Boom. Now they can decide, okay, well, I want the five, these five. Everybody else, no go. So it's a process of elimination. And it's important that you have certain things so you – can get through the system and then get to the hiring and then get to recruiter and then get to the hiring manager. Right. What are some of the major companies without telling the position or the individual who received the job? What are some of the major companies or organizations that you help people get employed by? I mean, you, I mean, everybody loves Amazon. So when I tell you that I've, I've, that I've worked with now, the funny thing is, you know, Amazon, not just the logistics side, we're talking about corporate. OK, right. So I've actually had people in the, like when I when we talk about corporate, we're talking about like, you know, there's, there's also AWS. There's there's the transportation side of the house. I mean, you name it. I've literally I've gotten everybody hired in almost so many different sectors of, of Amazon. That's one. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, like the big four that, you know, like the, the management consulting firms, the the KPMGs, the Deloitte, the Ernest and Young, you name it. I've. I've probably I've gotten probably plenty of people hired there. Um, and then, you know, of course, like, let's just say something left field like Pfizer, you Pfizer? know, because they're hot wow. right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, or AstraZeneca, even though they're not really, you know, doing, but that's the point. Like, I've these are like if I wanted to tell you like companies, I mean, hell, I mean, I even got people hired at Coca-Cola in, in Atlanta. So wow. you know, their headquarters. I mean, so look, it's really. So, I mean, proof is in the pudding. Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Amazon, Coca-Cola. That's bananas. Those are like Fortune 500 companies. You're doing your job. And absolutely. And it's great. I mean, I've so I have that aspect of it. And then, of course, like, you know, I, the federal side, I mean, you name it. I've, I've gotten pretty much everybody at every higher level you could think of. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, you know, state, county, government, you name it. I, I, and it, and it's, it's not limited to D.C., I need people to know that I don't limit myself to the DC area. A lot of my clients actually are now coming from, I mean, I, I already did my area here. I have mastered it to the point that like, I, I I'm good. And I have clients I I probably had maybe what I funny thing is I've had people hired and, and you're going to laugh, but surprisingly places like North and South Dakota, I would have never thought I'd reach anybody. Wow. There. But that's, that's my reach that I've been able to reach. You know, like the only place I probably haven't had it, like Wyoming, you know, I I, I did a, somebody from Idaho where, you know, so, so I mean, like it, it really I really have been able to touch everywhere. And I can honestly tell you if you if you ask me and that's why I take jobs very seriously, you know, so, you know, I may not be an economist, but by trade, I understand where location wise, where people are working, where they at like, OK, this area is crap. And I'm just like, oh, gosh. And I, you know, immediately I kind of start panicking because I'm like, yeah, you're going to pay me X amount of money. But I don't know how that area can be very rough. You know, so it's like I have to be very sympathetic and understanding of the person's location and how long it's going to take them and tell them the reality. Yeah, that's um, that's awesome. I mean, with, through the power of the Internet and your access on the internet at ardroresumes.com, R, that's R-D-R-O 
resumes.com. People can access you all over the world or all over the country. That's awesome. Um, Absolutely. Based upon your success and your experience in resumes, what are the three biggest errors that you see in um, resumes? Well, I'm going to start off with something that I see that I'm not a fan of. Mm-hmm. It's adding like form, like tables and formulas and things of that nature that might, it's okay to put percentages and data. I think that when you start adding more things to it, it starts affecting how the system reads it. And I get a lot of these where, where I, they'll, they'll insert tables and put call, you know, X, Y, Z, like a bunch oh, of stuff. Oh, I see what I'm you like, mean. Like a formatting yeah, so table. Exactly. Okay. A format within a format. And I'm okay. like, that thing is not going to get read. It's not. It's not. So then you're looking at, you know, besides that, I'm trying to go away from the typical banter of grammar and everything else. The thing about it is, and I, and I, I hate to be such a, you know, so different about it. You know, a lot of times the jobs are written a certain way and you also want to make sure it matches what the jobs are saying. And you may not necessarily agree with how grammatically correct it might be, but at the end of the day, it's also how it's written sometimes to help push you. And I'm not saying that grammar needs to be right or wrong, but what I'm saying (laughs) is you have to pay attention to how it matches the job. And So, so the grammar in the job the posting. Thing, do you have the qualifications that's in there? Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. I said the, the grammar, grammar is important. Is that no? The, the grammar is. Mm-hmm. But the dr- grammar in the job posting can be incorrect, but you want to make sure that your grammar is somewhat similar to giving the employer back what they're looking for in their same I'm style gonna, of speech. I know this is going to probably take this is probably going to tick a lot of people off because I, you know, like I I deal with a lot of perfectionists and I sometimes say, look, I understand what you're telling me, but I'm also telling you that it, it, you know, it had, you know, the system is put in there. Just take my word for it. And I've had a few and sometimes, you know, I mean, I fix whatever I can fix, but the big thing, honestly, is content, you know, content, does it match what they have strength and wording? And what I mean by strength and wording, it's, how are how are you writing writing your words? Is it bland? Is it just oh yeah, I did I did this, I executed this, or or I was able to achieve the following without using the word I because you'd say you know successfully implemented forty six blah 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 you know million dollars into a project. Okay, great. You know as opposed to I worked on projects set out by the supervisor. There's a difference there. So mm-hmm. those are things that I'm I'm trying to go a different route because. Everybody's going to tell you misspell words, grammar, but they're not going to tell you the truth of what I'm telling you, because these are the other factors that really are a big hindrance if you don't do it right. Right. So one is the grammar. That's a major error. The formatting like a grid or a graph. That's another major area. Would you be so kind exactly, of pointing out exactly. maybe a third? Is there a third one you see oftentimes? Okay, well, I hate to tell, I hate as grow as professionals, I have to say this, but the email <laughs> address is still a story. You'd, be, you'd be surprised, Sean. Like, I, I, the emails that I've read, you'd probably lose your email. You mean like, the email address? Hired? This guy has a Yale degree. Golly, yes, absolutely. I mean, you'd be surprised. I mean, I, it's almost like, okay, well, I went to Yale, but my, but my, but my email address says something about like um, uh, geek for nerds or something like that. And you're like <laughs> at Yahoo. It's like, so it could be like, no, it could be Jim Smith. And then the email address would be um, like um, what nasty nerd at yahoo.com. And, and that's so unprofessional. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, and you'd be surprised. And these are really well-polished people. Okay. So it, it doesn't matter. It, you know, people automatically think it's the, it's the person without the degree, but that's not the case. The case is it's everybody. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Email addresses go a long way. It's like, oh, this guy's, oh, what is this? Okay, they have no lack of, that automatically is a sign of, okay, there's no self-respect there in terms of how they want to be professionally you know, written or, or responded to. Yeah, I, you know, I'm an employer. I have my own firm along with this podcast. And if I see somebody's resume with the, weird email name 
I'm not even going past that. I'm just like, uh oh. <laughs> I, uh, I'm looking at the email name, and then I might Google the exactly. email name to see what's going on with this person. I'm like, your name is Junk in the Trunk, two thousand at gmail dot com. <laughs> like, you're not making it past <laughs> that. I'm not even looking any fr- further. Yeah. I mean, which. Yeah, which I've actually seen, and that's a common one. I know you're laughing, but it's the truth. You're mm-hmm. you're not lying. That's a common one. Mm-hmm. Like you'd be surprised, and you're like, "How old are you?" Like, wait, what? No, that's right. not working. You you pointed out um, that people aren't good about talking uh, about themselves or promoting themselves or talking themselves up. Why do you think that is? have an innate ability to try to be humble so they they don't want to appear a certain way and they also don't feel like they've advanced to a certain level so it's almost convenient to not talk about yourself you know in such a in such a high manner because everybody always says oh be humble be x y z not on a resume the resume really needs to highlight your ability as a as a professional to achieve you know that the next level of what you're trying to do mm-hmm yeah, it's hard. I mean, Americans don't like when you brag about yourself, right? But how can people know, how can employers know what you do unless you brag? And I think that's important uh, that they hire you because you get to brag for them and you take away the trepidation or fear or social exactly. reluctance in them bragging for themselves. Yeah. So that's, a, that's another great reason to hire you. Yeah. So you can brag for them. Absolutely. And, it's, and a lot of times I might be able to bring something out that they, they're like, wait a minute, I actually did this. I'm three. Can I add additional things? So it, it helps build the foundation. Then they get very comfor- comfortable and they're ready to take on the next steps. And mm-hmm. that's important for me. One of the most important things I think, and, and maybe I should have got the, at this sooner in the podcast but the reason why I wanted to um, interview you is that you've been tremendously successful. Um, uh, you share your salary increases. You're able to garner four people making a jump from one company or one organization to another. And you also share the position change that um, the uh, your clients have been able to obtain through your resume writing uh, and coaching. Um how many people have you assisted in getting hired just in the month of February? Share that. 27. 27. And, and we're only on the 22nd day. 27. That's, that's amazing. 27 people in February. And how you've been doing this Very for a number. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and it's during COVID-19 pandemic and you got 27 people jobs, 27 right. clients, new jobs. And I think you got one client, a new job, who's been out of school for how many months? I think they were out of school for a year or something, struggling. Like the, 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 yeah, there were a, re, a whole year. I mean, for this year, I think I've had a few, but that one right there, it was about a year and some change. And they were struggling to find a job, and they were able to finally get something, you know. And it's always, I always tell them, patience is a virtue, like, you know, it, it will work. This is it. like for some clients, they might get hired tomorrow. Yeah, but, Sean, but the thing is, the person that and they think I can do the same thing for them. Yeah, the person had been out of out of college for over a year and a half, but they didn't hire you while they were out of school. They hired you within like a month or two. In a month or two, you were able to get them a job. That's what I think we need to point out. They didn't hire you right That's away. Right. They were out. Yes. They, they were doing it on their own for over a year and a half. They hired you. And then, voila, they got the interview, then they got the job. That's amazing. First job. And, and you know, and exa- that really made me happy. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it because, you know, and it's so funny, Sean, because I've helped so many people. So sometimes I get a lot, I get a bunch of uh, emails and phone calls. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I have to go back and read my emails to go to the, this, the you know, when was the last time I worked with them so I can see the dates of, Hey, I worked with this person. It was a year ago. Oh crap! This was six months ago. Oh wait a minute! This was X, Y, and Z. So it helps, you know, put things in perspective for me, you know, as well. Right. Um. 
So total in all your years of experience in writing resumes, how many people do you think you've uh, gotten a new job or helped them obtain a new job? Well, I know it's over 4,500. 4,500. Oh my God. I had no idea you helped that many people for that's amazing, Richard. Wow. And, um, do people come back and recycle their resume or do they just keep plugging away with the one that you wrote for them? Uh, a lot of them come back to me for edits and changes and I do it for them. And then I'll have, I'll, I'll sometimes just, um, you know, and sometimes they don't need me. And that's, you know, that's also good because they're already using my product and all they have to do is send it out and I'm happy. Right. Yeah. So it works. They're already using your product. And that that's the good thing about it because you give them the initial framework and then they can go from there. But um, tell me about uh, I, I just gave away one of your success stories because I was blown away by it. Um, the um, the uh, kid that graduated from college, I say kid, I'm 50. Um, the young person that graduated from college couldn't no, find a job no, and then got, they got I you. Got and and um, tell me about your two best success stories, like somebody who was totally qualified, but their resume was poorly written. Hmm. Okay. So get- I'll just talk about a recent one because he actually posted on, on LinkedIn, but I had a gentleman. Huh? Don't, don't tell us th- their name. Just so I'll mm-hmm. say this. No, I won't. I'll just say this. I'll say that the gentleman came to me and he wanted to get into IT. And he had a technical background, but could not really, you know, it couldn't really go into detail, uh, you know, into what he did. So what I did was I brought a lot of the information out. And I said, okay, these are 15, 20 jobs that have very common things that they look for. I redid his resume. And I mean, still to this day, he's taxing me texting me like rich i can't believe it i have 14 job offers <laughs> you know and literally changed his life <laughs> so 14 I, job I, offers i'm over here laughing because yeah. I, I was like wait what? he posted uh, he posted it on his on his on his on on linkedin so everybody can see and i mean the thing was like it, it's a great success story because i was able to take someone with almost barely anything written on our resume about the technical background and put it in a way that makes sense. And the good thing is it, it's also, it's also an indication that he, he obviously could do the job. He could interview very well. It just on paper, he just couldn't, he couldn't get to it. Wow. That's amazing. 14 jobs. That's 14 job offers off of your work on his resume. That's, that's awesome. Um, Give a story about someone who had a significant increase in their salary, where they were and where they wound up. Okay. So this one's sort of classified based upon what they've done. But what I'll say is I actually, funny thing is I had one of my, my, my buddies I went to boot camp with, um, you know, and we, through the years he, he, he worked with me and um, like, you know, like he was like, Hey Rich, I want a time comes. Can I talk to you? So one day he hits me up. I'm like, Richard, I'm ready. I'm like, you, I'm like, dude, what have you been doing the past couple of years? Well, I'm just going to put it like this. He was an investigator in the army. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, um, and it's a real thing called, I'm not going to get into it, but <laughs> don't, get into it. don't get into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. But he came to me and said, Rich, like, I need help. I need a job like ASAP. I'm actually getting out early. I said, dude, what do you mean early? He's like, I need to get out. Like, um, they've told me I can go. Like, I'll get an honorable discharge. I'm good. I can. I'm like, all right, well, great. All right, let's. I'm like, well, dude, you don't have that much time. Two weeks later, he comes back to me. And I thought it was a joke. Like, I looked at him. I said, whatever, man. Like, there ain't no way in hell you got you got that much of a salary. And I posted it last year and I couldn't believe it. Well, dude, got. I think it was like it was like over one hundred and fifty thousand salary. Uh, increase Whoa. That's and, um, bananas. And I, I haven't, I have yet to ask him what company because he said I can't tell you, but I'll just say, you know, that within itself is such a big, big deal for me. But I'll just say that it's it's a security firm. Wow, 
That's amazing. 150 G's. That's crazy. I can't believe it. Yeah. That's what I said. Now, um, when, when, when I used to work for other people, I was a real go getter and a real, really ambitious. Is that your little dog? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Let, 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 let your, let your dog get some camera time. You had a cute, cute doggy. Oh. <laughs> What's the doggy's name? His name is Motley for like Motley Crew. Motley Crew. Look at him. Now, what kind of dog is this? Is this Schnauzer or Lopsa Opsa? No, so he's actually a, a Yorkie mix. He's a I think he's a mix of a Maltese. So he's a Maltese right. Crew Yorkie mix. Cute dog. Get, we're, we've been trying to figure it out, like you know, but yeah, <laughs> he's my little boy. Get a doggy DNA and test. It, and it, um, yeah, I know and. He, and you know me, Sean. You know, if I'm going to have my little dog, my little dog is about to be blinged out like his daddy. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I like, you know, you know, I like jewelry. I like shiny things. Yeah, you know it. You know it. <laughs> but but um, when I was looking for jobs um, before I started yeah. my own company, I was a real hustler. I was really ambitious, right? And I didn't know that resume writers like you existed. Um, is this a new trend or are you creating the niche? I've created my own niche. I mm-hmm. follow the beat of my own drum. I'm very unique in what I do in terms of how I handle things and what I do. The problem is, is that I'm also now competing with the, just a bunch of people of are now, are now there's almost a plethora of new career coaches and resume writers that just popping up, popping up, giving bad, bad experiences. X, <laughs> y, and, Z. and hell, I might've been, I might have been someone's bad experience, and I have no problem admitting it. I, you know, sometimes I've dropped the ball, right? And I'm always, but I'm always transparent. But I'm always transparent, and I always tell people, go look at my number. You know, I'll tell you if I had I had 320 people hired last year, and my six my low rate, if I had only you know 40 some X Y Z or 50 or whatever, you know, total. That's why how I got 90. I work with this many people last year, and these are the people that I ended up getting jobs. So I have a I have a reason to be a little bit um, hard on my clients, or I pre, you know how I'm I'm stern about what I believe in because at the end of the day, three twenty fifty, uh, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, like you know what I mean, like I, you know. But there's a lot of folks that are actually doing this as a hobby and not as a passion. This is my passion. This is what I enjoy. And if it wasn't for that, if it was about the money, I I would I would have really strict hours. Seriously, I really would. And I don't because I tend to work a lot later. I This is what I do. I enjoy it. I put in my blood, sweat and tears into this. So, you know, and sometimes it reflects and sometimes it doesn't. But the, the thing is, is that it is becoming a very new industry because people are trying to find ways to make money. But then those folks also tend to get burnt out quickly because when you get your first client and a couple of clients start being nasty to you or they don't like something and you're trying to prove your point and it, and it goes sideways, it's it's just a whole different ball game because you're paying, you're playing with people's livelihood, you know, right. and it's a whole different ball game. What is your ideal client? Who should hire you? Um, self-sufficient, you know, like they understand that it's going to take some time. My clients, you know, I have a variety of different clients and a lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of them are very, uh, you know, the ones that are successful are the ones I, I barely even hear from, honestly. And, and, and next thing you know, like, Wilbur, should I have an offer? I'm like, Dude, <laughs> you do? I was starting to get worried. He's like, no, I've been going on plenty of interviews. I just feel like I didn't want to tell you. Right. I'm like, hey, that's fair. I'm okay with that. I'd rather hear the end story anyway. You know, like, you know, so it's, you know, the it's, for me, it's more so you know what you want. And if you don't know what you want, that's why I'm here to help you. I'm mm-hmm. here to push you. So, and you know, and it's okay. I'd rather you come to me wanting to learn and wanting to be on the right attitude because attitude, believe it or not, plays a big part in this. And it's, you know, it really is, Sean. Like, I can't stress it enough. Like, you, you know, you're out, you're, you're a positive vibe will ensure your outcome. And this is one of those things because, you know, you might go through three weeks of zero calls. Right. And then the next week you might have five. And out that five, you might finally have got that one that got you to that final interview. And then the next week, you might only have one. Right. So you have to really think about, you have to really, it's like a number, it's a numbers game. You have to sit there and you have to put the paper, you know, put pen to paper and push and just be self-sufficient. It takes time. Now, um, do you help with the 
coaching and interviewing also? Yes, I do. I've helped a lot of clients with interviewing at all different levels. Um, Behavioral-based interviewing, technical. I mean, but, you know, Sean, believe it or not, what is what is hurting a lot of people is the soft skills. Mm-hmm. People people might be really good at their jobs, but the people aspect of it and how to deal with situations and talk about those situations are the hardest thing that I'm dealing with right now. And having to bring that out of people, it is extremely difficult because there are folks that just don't, they struggle with that. And, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to blame social media or don't want to blame the environment that we're in. But, man, it's it's very disappointing. Very disappointing. Yeah, I um I do a behavioral style interview in yeah. my interviewing. And I worked for a great corporation. And I'm going to say the name of the corporation that I worked for. It was American Honda. And mm. American Honda interviewed 2,100 people throughout the United States. This was back in... 1995, 1996, it was called the okay. Honda Management Trainee Program. And if you made it through that, they usually p- picked like 10 to 12 individuals a year. I don't know if they still have the program, but they used a behavioral interview style. And I had never experienced it before, but lucky me, I, w- I had a job in sales and I like to talk. And I <laughs> knew how to think and I knew how to be truthful because the behavioral interview style is really going to test whether or not you're truthful, number one. And then number two, can you do the job that they need you to do? And can you exactly. be worked with to get that job done? And so American Honda taught me that exactly. and I was lucky, but a lot of people like don't have those skills. Indicators to see how- right. <laughs> So you prepare people for the interview. How long do you spend with them? No, they don't, Sean. They don't. Mm-hmm. How long do you prepare people to get ready for the interview? Uh, 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. It could be multiple sessions, but usually it's about like 45 to an hour and a half. I tend not to I tend not to do that too long because I don't want people's attention span to start losing after a certain period of time. And I even start being like, okay, we need to pause. Let's go back and do it tomorrow. Take a break. You, and that's one of those things where, you know, 45 to hour and a half is good, but I try to limit to an hour and then fought pick back up. Right. That's good. Yeah. The interviewing styles and ability to answer questions and, and make yourself likable, right? They want to, people want to work with people they like and they don't want to work with weird people. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. They want to be comfortable. Um, what are the, what are the three big interview mistakes you see people make and you have to make sure they don't make? Well, if you're talking about behavioral base, right. Mm-hmm. And you know, we'll try to avoid the word. We, the we is because that takes away from you. So, you know, if it's something that you did in a project, but you worked in a project team, talk about the I element. Okay. The I did, this. you know, that's important. So that's one thing that I'm like, always like, Hey, no, no, no. Scratch that. We crap. We, because they're, they're because they're going to take that as as points off and deduct it because they're not going to know if you're the one who created or implemented that process. All right. Second, um, having viable stories that make sense, you know, and ha- and matching it to the appropriate level, and that's important because you want to make sure that the jobs that you're that you're going for your 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 experiences match what they're looking for. If they don't, right, you know, can you rise to the occasion? Explain how it does. And a lot of times people don't have the right story. And with the behavioral base, another another or last important thing for me is um, ending on a positive note. And now this sounds crazy. Now, the reason being is with the, the behavioral based interviewing is tricky because there are going to be some things that you answer or they might ask you that are purposely there to really see if you can talk about the, the problem, the solution and what did you did? What did you do to make it work? That is is important. If you can't talk about the successful outcome of a bad situation or what you did that was right, or even if it was a bad situation, but you can explain, look, this is what I learned. This is what I did. And I implemented and followed through. That is a sign of somebody that understands their error, can improve on it, is coachable, and is also identify ways to improve right. in that amount of time. And, and that's, those are people, people don't do that, Sean. So they're having a lot of, they're not able to speak on those things. They're not able to talk about it and not able to move forward. Yeah. Being coachable and likable and those 
and those other three tips you gave are really, really essential. Um, let's talk about cost. Uh, I saw one woman uh, say something about your cost, and I couldn't believe that she said that your cost was high because when I looked at your track record and 4,500 people hired because of your resume, um, people getting salaries, a $150,000 salary increase, average $35,000 salary increase. Um, the amount of money that you charge, I think it's extremely fair for your services and they can find your prices on our dot com. But, uh, if you want to make money, it takes money, right? Yeah. And I always, and you know, I, I always post my stats so far and I always post about ROI and I'm the first one to always mention, Hey, here's proof of ROI, why you should, you know, if this guy paid seven fifty and he got a $45,000 increase, you can, you decide what that means. Or this guy paid two seventy five and he got a 25,000. Or this guy paid five fifty and got fifteen thousand. You know what I mean? So it just it just it it just depends. Like, you know what I mean? Like it depends all on how are you how are, you know, how do you want to go about it? Because either way it goes, I mean, you, you know, you were even if I got you a four thousand dollar increase, you still got it you got net three thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah, thirty I mean, yeah, you know? it's easy money. <laughs> easy money, yeah. I mean it justifies itself. And it's like, well damn ROI. I made, I made more mm-hmm. Exactly. well I made more on the back end. Well, great. There you go. You yeah. Know? Return on investment. That That's ROI return on information, right? <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. You're, you're like that's giving good. them the that's information good. and doing what they need to be done in order for them to be successful to get that job. Without a doubt, it's worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. If people want to get in touch with you, Richard Drosen, how do they get in touch with you? Well, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's where I have a lot of my, my followers. I'm, not just your regular schmegular connection. I have, a, I think, over 27,000 connections on LinkedIn. So I'm very active on there. I have 297 nations on there. Um, and um, you can find me at Richard, dot, well, Richard Drosen on LinkedIn. And on I on Instagram, it's rdroresumes. Um, on Facebook is RD Resume and Career Coaching. And you should be able to find me any one of those. And if you just want to reach me directly, you can go to rdro resume. That's r d r o resumes dot com, and you can find me there. How do you spell Drosen? Uh, d r o s i n. So Richard Drosen, d r i d r o s i n. Um, got it. Richard got Drosen, it. the resume guy. Hey, uh, I always like to give my guests an opportunity to ask me questions um, because I am the pushy questioner, the nosy guy. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I've been to parties and they said, you just ask somebody a hundred questions and nobody gets to ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, you do ask questions. I do. I mean, I I don't even got to know you to ask questions. What? uh, Oh, man. So, you know what? Let's see. Sean, what was, you know, what's your biggest takeaway from my conversation with you today? Oh, my biggest takeaway is, man, where were you when I was hustling to try to make it on my own? Where was somebody like <laughs> you? Um, but, you know, maybe it was God's plan for me not to have a resume writer so I could start my own business. Right. right? right. But, um, you know, I would say if you're looking to get the big time right and not have any career regrets, and maximize your opportunity for a job at a fortune 500 company, like you've been spending your wheels, you're stuck. It's worth paying the money for Richard Drosen to give you an opportunity without, that's why I wanted to do the podcast. I kept looking at this stuff. I said, man, Richard's rolling. He's balling. He got the shiny necklace. He's, He's working all over the country. He's on vacation working. And I said, man, I got to talk to this guy. Oh, and then I second, I take breaks, I, people need to know what you do so that they can utilize your skill and talents and live their best life. And I think that that's important. You know, one of the things people so, have to get over is um, like corporate, the work world has a look, right? But the person who has the gift to help you, doesn't have to have a look, doesn't have to have the name, doesn't have to have the voice, but they understand the primary thing for job winning, career advancement, 
and money earning. And the number one thing is sales. And there is somebody who can sell you better than you can sell yourself. And his name is Richard Drosen. Don, I, I can't even, you know, I think I, I don't want to ask anything else because I, that was beautiful. And I think, you know, one of the things I pride myself on is that I work with people that don't look like me, that yeah. don't have tattoos, they don't have jewelry, they don't do X, Y, and Z. I'll probably work and and just to and to be very candid, right? Be very candid with you. Like I don't push anybody away. It comes down to respect and how you treat me. For example, let's just not to bring politics because we're not bringing politics. But what I'm going to say is I've actually had a, a few Trump, um, oh God, um, appointees. You know, just looking for resume writers. I didn't turn them away. I did not turn them away. A Trump person you know, came I didn't for you that. to write the resume. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And I and I basically, you know, I you know, I just said, hey, this is the things I can do, whether they chose me or not. Just being able to have a conversation where you can tell that person it wasn't a bad person. They weren't. They weren't. You know, they they legitimately just had a job, and you could tell the difference in people. And when I when I tell people to say, look at me, I've worked with everybody. I mean, I have people who are making, you know, $400,000 a year doing stuff and they probably would never talk to me on the street, but here they see me and they see that I can help them. Guess what? They're getting their peers and everybody else to come to me because they said, Richard, I like you. I like your professionalism. When it comes to this, I like who you are. So, you know, and I appreciate you sharing that because it's important to me because, you know, especially being biracial and growing up that, you know, like living in a city, I've been able to be blessed to connect with a lot of people. And my biggest attribute is I connect with people at every and every level. And that's been my biggest asset. So I like people. So I tend to, you know, gravitate. Yeah. You like people, you're likable, you're friendly, you're a relationship builder. um, And you advance in our fraternity because you're likable, you're dependable, you're trustworthy and you're a relationship builder. And I think it comes across in your work because our employers want people who are likable dependable team players and achievers and you do it all. And I think it comes across in your work and everybody's getting the benefit of your success in life through your resume writing and your personal career success. So it's awesome. Thank you. That that means a lot. Thank you. Yep. Hey man, thanks for joining us today. I hope the audience got a lot from this. You got three tips on the big errors. You got five tips on interview mistakes and more importantly you got to meet richard drosen you get an opportunity to like them and love them and hire them go to <laughs> rdrillresumes.com talk to richard drosen hire him get that job of your dreams get the career advancement that you deserve and more importantly get paid hire rdrill resumes richard <laughs> i appreciate that sean thank you yeah man thanks uh, I'm a big fan and thanks for joining us today. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Attorney knows best. Intelligent questions. Interesting.